This video is brought to you by the Jimmy Lewis Off-Road Riding School. Be sure to check out the Learn to Ride online course at jimmylewisoffroad.com. Hi, I'm Matt Mattoon. And I'm Cooper Luke. And today we're going to give you our quick impression on the 2022 KLX 230 RS. Now, the 2022 230 RS doesn't really feature a whole lot of changes, but it does have one big difference between it and the KLX 230R. And that is the RS features a 0.8 inch lower seat height. So this bike is designed for people who are smaller or of shorter stature. And when you throw a leg over this bike and you start taking off, you get the sense that the power is also designed for someone of the same body type or is more of a beginner rider. Because when you take off, it doesn't really start pulling away from you. Like if, you, if this is your first time using the throttle, it's not gonna be like one of those videos where you just, where the bike just takes off unexpectedly and you end up in a fence or a wall. Like when we were riding this thing, both in the sand, tight technical trails and up gravel hills, a lot of its power was made in the low end and was pretty. a lot of it was usable, but not really gonna rip your arms out. And that's where you were riding it as well, right? Yeah, I agree. It's This bike is it's very mellow on the throttle and clutch control. It's not like you you can just dump the clutch and you're gonna be doing wheelies. It's mm -hmm. very, very good beginner bike for that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but there's still enough power there to pretty much ride in whatever trail situation that you would want it to. Like we said, sand, I was able to get stu stuck and unstuck in sand all by itself, turning in the sand, more uh, riding in a wash and in up uh, gravel, rocky areas. Yeah. When you start leaving that bottom end though, and going more to the mid to the top, there's not really a, a whole lot there. Again, so there's not a lot there to get you in trouble, but there's still enough there to we were still to to ride faster yep. in the more of a flat, higher speed section. Uh, and we were still able to get this bike to do what, anything we wanted. Yeah. Was there anything else that you were that you noticed about the power? Uh, not much. It was, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, there's not enough power to get you in trouble, but mm -hmm. there is enough power for you to do everything. Like Matt said, we went in the sand, we went uphill, single tracks. It was all around good. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And it is a fuel injected bike. So I never once got like a sputter that you'll sometimes get with the carb. It started right up when in the, in the morning when it was a little cooler. Uh, we didn't have it and it is an air cooled engine. And we, even though we were riding it in, I'd say anywhere, we, it was probably what, mid nineties when we were riding. Yeah. It didn't really overheat and no problems with it. I, overall, I'd say the engine was, it did everything we wanted it to. And it's a really mellow power, power delivery for a more beginner rider or someone who is just smaller. Now going into the ergonomics, I mentioned that this chassis is set up for someone who is a little shorter. And you get the sense when you first sit, sit on this bike, you get, when you stand up, I did have to lean forward a little bit more, kind of bend down to reach the bars. But I will say the levers, I was still able to reach them nice and comfortably. The, the brakes were nice and strong. I never once doubted the brakes when we were going down a hill or if I needed a panic brake for an unexpected pothole or something jumping out in front of me. The clutch pull was consistent, right? Yep. I didn't have any issues with the clutch. Uh, it does feature disc brakes, both front and rear. No drum brake like you'll see with some bikes, uh, like, like you've seen in the past with some bikes of this displacement. And, the, and it led to them feeling really strong and a smooth, consistent pull. So when it comes to the handling of this bike, it for me, it felt planted both in the straightaways, in the bumps, and also in the turns. Did you get the same sensation? Yeah, I agree. It mm -hmm. felt pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, the bike never did anything that I was, uh, it never did anything unexpected. It always did what I wanted it to, exactly when I wanted to do it. Uh, the Dunlop tires hooked up well, pretty much in any situation, both the sand, gravel, uh, and kind of like looser, dirt, looser di uh, dirt as well. Now onto the suspension. This is where we all universally agreed, probably this bike's weakest point. It does come with a 37 millimeter conventional forks. And we recognize that these bikes aren't designed for us. Uh, I weigh about 165, how much do you weigh? About 160. 160, and even though we were trying to ride this bike within its, capabil within its capabilities, you know, who it was designed for, we were trying to ride it like a beginner's, I was still bottoming it on some of the bigger bumps and some of the bigger whoops. I, yeah. No no jumping, just riding it into a bump and I could hear it every now and then. The So the suspension, it, it bottomed, since it bottomed so easily for us, 
I was never really able to get this bike into the sixth gear, even the wide open, just because I was, I, I would feel like once if I got into sixth gear and I was trying to go as fast as this bike could go, the, even a smaller bump at those speeds, the bike would blow through most of its stroke. So the suspension is what holds it back for someone like our size and our abilities. But for someone who's a beginner rider, I think they would really appreciate how cushiony that the suspension is. So even when we were out on longer rides, the 1.7 gallon gas tank was more than enough for us. We, I don't even think we got the fuel light to come on and we were out riding this thing out in the wide open flats for probably about an hour and a half to two hours. And that was on top of another hour of the tighter technical stuff, both in the sand and some ravines and in some gravel hills. So, so Cooper, overall, would you say Kawasaki did a good job with this bike and who it's designed for? Yeah, I think Kawasaki made a good beginner bike for this mm -hmm. as far as the power, the suspension, how low to the ground it is. Mm -hmm. I think this is a good beginner bike. Right. Someone who would, might be a little intimidated by the taller seat heights of a, of, of a normal dirt bike. I think they're going to find this thing really comfortable to ride, both in the seat height and with, how, with the really cushiony suspension. You can really rely on these brakes to stop if they start going faster than they mean to. And with the handling, it's never really gonna do anything that a beginner wouldn't expect. It's not gonna catch them off guard. And I agree with Cooper in saying that this bike, it's, it's really good for, for what it's designed for. So yeah, that's our first impression on the 2022 KLX 230RS. Uh, I'm excited to put more time on this and yeah, look for a full test on dirtbiketest.com and you'll see this in an upcoming beginner comparison as well. Uh, until then, this is Matt, I'm Matt Mattoon. And I'm Cooper Luke. And we'll see you out on trails.